Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this video I'll be discussing definition of a hash function, hash and hashing, then hash pre-image and hash pre-image calculation, finally hash collision and hash collision attack. So let's get started. We can start off with the hash function. It is a mathematical function that maps an input of any length to a typically shorter fixed length value. We can also express this mapping process as an equation hx equals h. Here x is an input value and uppercase h is a hash function and lowercase h is the output value or hash. Second is the hash or hash value. It is the output value that is written by the hash function. It is also known as a digest, checksum or fingerprint. Finally, hashing. It is the process of mapping a given input to a typically shorter fixed length value using the hash function. Therefore, a hash function, hash and hashing are the interrelated terms. Note, we are learning hash function and hashing in the context of cryptography. So our explanation and examples will be related to cryptography. Let's look at an example of hashing to understand some basic properties of a hash function. We discussed in the definition fixed length hash and shorter than the input. Here the input is Nitin is teaching cryptography. Now I'm applying MD5 hash function or algorithm to generate its hash value or digest. The generated hash value is of 16 bytes which is a fixed length in MD5 hash function. It means MD5 hash function will always generate a hash value of 16 bytes regardless of what the input size is. This is a standard with every hash function or algorithm and an important property to conceal any information about the input. Now let's compare the size of input and output in this hashing process. Here the input Nitin is teaching cryptography is of 31 character. If I convert this input into hex using the standard ASCII code then it will be of 31 bytes which is greater than the 16 bytes fixed size hash value of MD5 and this is what we have just explained in the definition of hash function that the size of a hash value is typically shorter than the input but the input could be of any length. Now let's look at another important property of a hash function sensitive to change. If I just change a single letter of the input text for example the first uppercase letter n to lowercase n and apply the same md5 hash function then the new hash value will be significantly different from the first hash value although both inputs are almost similar. Here the difference between the two hashes is around 51%. Another important thing to notice here that the size of both hash values is of 16 bytes in md5 which we have already discussed. These are some basic properties of hash functions. I have discussed properties in more detail in cryptographic hash function video. Now let's look at another important term pre-image in hashing. Pre-image is nothing but just another name of an input because a hash is called an image and the input that maps to the hash is called its pre-image. Now we'll try to understand hash pre-image in more detail. Let's assume the number of inputs equals to the number of hashes which is not the case in practice but it will help us to understand the concept of pre-image. Here we have got four inputs and four hashes equal in size. Therefore each input can be mapped to one hash as shown in figure. x1 is mapped to h4, x2 is mapped to h1, x3 is mapped to h2, x4 is mapped to h3. So here we can easily understand the mapping of an input or pre-image and hash or image which is one to one mapping. Now we look at the real condition where the number of 
inputs is significantly greater than the number of hashes. In this example, we have got four inputs and two hashes. Therefore, more than one input should be mapped to each hash as shown in figure. Here, x1 is mapped to h1, x2 is mapped to h1, x3 is mapped to h2, and x4 is mapped to h2. So, the first two inputs are mapped to h1 and the last two inputs are mapped to h2. Now, this leads to a significant issue of collision in hashing. But before we talk about collision, let's look at how we calculate a number of pre-images for a given input and hashed size. Let's assume input block size is b bit, then the total possible messages are 2 to the power b. And the hash function generates a hash of size n bit, where n is smaller than b. Then the total possible hashes are 2 to the power n. Now we can calculate number of pre-images for each hash, which is 2 to the power b minus n pre-images. Now let's look at an example. Here input size is 5 bits and hash size is 4 bits. Then the total inputs equals to 2 to the power 5, which is 32. And the total hashes equals to 2 to the power 4, which is 16. Finally, number of pre-images for each hash equals 2 to the power 5 minus 4, which is 2, as shown in the figure. So pre-image calculation is easy. Now we discuss what is a hash collision. When we have two different inputs, and the same hash function is used to generate their hash values. And if both generate the same hash value, then it is called a hash collision. A hash collision occurs when a hash function or algorithm generates the same hash value for two different input values. It occurs because a hash function takes a greater input value than the generated hash value for that input. And therefore, there is a possibility that two different inputs may generate the same hash value due to the significantly lower number of hash values. For a good cryptographic hash function, it should be computationally infeasible to find a hash collision. Now we know what is a hash collision. So let's look at a hash collision attack. A hash collision attack is an attempt to find two inputs of a hash function that generate the same hash value. It means when a hash function allows an attacker to find two inputs that result in the same hash value, then the attacker can exploit this hash collision to perform an attack. There are several ways a hash collision could be exploited by the attacker. One possible scenario is compromising the integrity of any benign file if another malicious file has the same hash value. The attacker can control and manipulate both inputs and easily replace the malicious file in place of a benign file in order to exploit it to achieve their desired goal. Therefore, we need a collision resistant hash function in security. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.